Ok. So, buenas tardes a todos. Uh, muchas gracias uh, para la invitación. Es un gran honor. Pero yo no hablo español, uh, so I will uh, switch to English. Uh, and would like to thank uh, my friend uh, Julio Mayol uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, he said uh, way too much uh, nice words to me. And uh, I share the pleasure to be with him in this uh, BGS uh, uh, committee. So today, uh, it's a great uh, honor and a great pleasure to be in this uh, virtual Congress uh, in Les Asturias about uh, Investigaciones en la Chirurgia. And I will speak from uh, something I really like to is uh, about ERAS, but I would like to start from the surgical technique and try to go beyond and uh, to go to enhance recovery after surgery. This is the wonderful hospital of Lausanne. You see in the back uh, the big lake uh, of uh, Lausanne. Uh, here is the old hospital where Professor César Roux, the man who described first the rouen y anastomosis, did operate. This is the big hospital where we are working today. And uh, this is our brand new cancer center uh, where we can also work there. So uh, as mentioned before, uh, what is interesting is in surgery is to speak about strategy. Because what is strategy? By definition, strategy is planning an action. And so you have the surgical strategy, you have the strategy of the global patient management, and you have the entire perioperative strategy. What does it mean, surgical strategy? This is surgery. This is technique that's usually what the surgeon love to discuss in a meeting, to present how they are good by making the operations and so forth. For me, surgical strategy and the surgical technique, this is the basis. If you don't have that, you are not a surgeon. That's why I'm very interested to speak about the strategy of the global patient management. Today, that's multidisciplinary. I will give you an example. And of course, I will speak about the perioperative strategy, the entire management around the operation, which is the ERAS. For those who love the technique, the surgical strategy, you have here some surgical instruments. They are 4,000 years old. And if you look well, you will see some of them in the operating room today. Then you can go to the next step, which is the multimodal operating room with robot, MRI, intel artificial intelligence, enhanced uh, virtual reality, and all this element. And all of this is the body of surgical technique. Yes, about the strategy, this is a patient, 60 years old. You see his liver, all these dark uh, shadows are metastasis. And if we look at the liver, we will see that that the entire liver, inclusive the left side, uh, is full of metastasis, but the segment four. The segment four is intact. What's happened to this patient? Well, you see this patient 10 years later, the segment four did grow up, and this patient is free of disease. This was a pure application of strategy and technique. And if we want to go into detail, you see all these elements this patient received, uh, about uh, chemotherapy, interventional radiology, and various surgical strategy, and all these in the body of ERAS. That was just to show you the importance of surgical technique and the importance of surgical management and strategy. Now we have a new problem. We have the COVID and the surgery. That's why we have only a virtual meeting, and I have not the pleasure to share a good uh, glass of wine with you after the meeting. And uh, the other problem, which is maybe a little more serious, is that just at the beginning of the pandemic last year, 20 million surgery were postponed. And to, to back up that, you need almost one year. Today, we have at over 50 million surgery which were postponed. And the big question was, should or what could the surgeons do? Well, one of the possibility, one of the possibility, not the possibility, is to apply the enhanced recovery after surgery ERAS to the patient. Uh, why? Because if you apply surgery and ERAS, you will decrease the general complication by 20 to 50%, depending on the subspeciality, and you will decrease the, lost, uh, the length of stay and the cost. 
ERAS actually was developed in 2005, 15 years ago, was published by Ken Firon and Ole Lundquist, the two who started in colorectal with this famous uh, circle of all the elements uh, uh, contributing to do ERAS. Because what was great in ERAS, it is a global surgical strategy, but it is also multidisciplinary. You need a team. You need the surgeon and the anesthetist, but you also need the nurse, you need the administration, you need a leader, and you need an ERAS coordinator, somebody who help all these uh, participants to work together, and all of them are working to the benefit of the patient. ERAS has three phases. You have everything before the operation, it's preoperative. You have everything during the operation, this is intraoperative, and you have the postoperative, which is after the operation. Look at this list, nothing spectacular. All these elements seem pretty basic. We'll go uh, and discuss some of them. But the point of an ERAS protocol is to have all these elements multidisciplinary put together. And when you have everybody working together and sharing common ERAS objectives within the ERAS team, then you will have some more success and you will help your patient. And all of that is based on the communication. So when you have communication, you have an emitter and you have a receptor, and then you communicate together. That's a very important point in the operating room, like in the cockpit of a plane. Within the ERAS, there are some hot topic and there are some not topic. I will just mention some of them which are generally available. You have the fluid restriction for the entire uh, surgery. You have the pain management. When you have surgery, you have pain. You have no nasogastric tube, no drain, uh, with some exception, and you have the early mobilization. And I would like to bring you some of those elements which are more general. This is a patient in an intensive care unit in the US. If you look good, this patient was operated by esophagus, but he is still intubated. And if you look better, this patient has only one leg. This is intensive postoperative mobilization. And you need a lot of collaboration and you need a lot of information of the patient to be able to do so. Then we have the fluid restriction. What is the fluid restriction? It's not this, it's not that, it is this. Why? Because this is poison. And actually there is a lot of data, some of uh, our group, uh, the last one published last year, you have a direct relationship between the IV fluid administration and the postoperative frequency of complication. And the same with the body weight increase. You have a direct relationship. So the more fluid you will give, the more postoperative complication you will have. This is an independent risk factor. And to fight all that and to put in place some of the elements I just showed you before, we have the ERAS guidelines, which have some perioperative pathway, show you the way. You have here uh, some of the elements. It was published uh, some time ago. We have now a little bit more, and uh, we try to promote this internationally. Those ERAS guidelines are available for free on the ERAS website. The big question is what won the surgeons? The surgeons, they have a motivation to implement an enhanced recovery program. And the number one, they want to reduce complication. They want also a higher patient satisfaction. And as secondary effect, they want to shorten the length of stay. If you look, Whipple operation, that's a pancreas resection. And traditionally, you have a lot of complication after Whipple procedure, depending on how strict you uh, re you report about your complications. And if you look at this number of complications, if you can decrease the complication by a few percent, you reach something very interesting. And for that, we just published uh, in 2020 the guidelines for perioperative care uh, for Whipple procedure. Those are the ERAS recommendation. And uh, the best is I give you some pancreas data. I start with the pancreas because traditionally everybody knows that the pancreas has a lot of postoperative complication. If you look at this older meta-analysis, which was done with the first ERAS guideline we published in 2012, 
you see that uh, we have uh, in favor of ERAS less complication. The data in my hospital show that we have a decrease of complication in the ERAS uh, pathway for pancreas surgery by 35%, which is a lot. And uh, I would love to show you the data of four international centers, Switzerland, Germany, France, and United States of America, over 400 patients operated by a Whipple procedure. Don't be afraid for all this data. Just look at the complications that you will observe in the majority of cases, a decrease in complication, but you will decrease, observe also a decrease in length of stay uh, due to the ERAS pathway in the, uh, in the Whipple procedure. And if I summarize this data of this uh, big uh, study, you see that the complication and length of stay were decreased by roughly 35%. Colorectal is traditionally the first element that was applied uh, for ERAS. So this is uh, an Italian data meta-analysis, long time ago already, but because this was the first one, this was very interesting. And you see that the postoperative complications were decreased by 40% along all these data. One of them is one of my group. And the hospital of length of stay was also decreased by 2.3 days. And actually, we have a, an increased turnover, so you have more beds available because the patients stay less long in the hospital. And we can say that today, the era success in colorectal surgery is a level one evidence. We have also data for liver. This is the published in 2016. We are just about to uh, make an update. It should be published this year about the guidelines for liver surgery. And the best I give you again, our own results, it is a 470 uh, liver treated with the ERAS compared to non-ERAS in 80 cases prior to the ERAS implementations. And you see a decrease in complications. You see a decrease in uh, median hospital stay, a, a big one. And you see also way less patients are going to the ICU after major liver resection. And we are not the only one. This is a Chinese data from Hong Kong. Uh, Dr. Liang Xiao, a friend of mine, uh, made the liver laparoscopic resection. And what you see here as the same, he has a significant decrease in the complication rate. Uh, uh, and also, he has a significant decrease in cost. The money he is, is the Yuan, the, the RMB, uh, the money from China. But this is also highly significant. And that brings me to the money. Switzerland is money, you know that in Spain. And ERAS is cost effective. Those are three papers we have published in my group, analyzes the real costs. And based on this analysis of the real cost, we have done now an explanation about the number of patients. So in the first row, you see the number of patients treated for colorectal, pancreas, liver, and upper GI. Then here you see the complication rate decrease we could obtain, and you see the decreasing cost. Swiss franc is almost dollar on euro, more or less one to one. And we have this data only for the colorectal. This is also a significant decrease in working load, in workload for the nurses, which is very, very interesting. Now, if you look at the decrease in money per case and the huge number of patients we treated that way, the saving are over eight millions, which is a lot of money. And then we can add, we also apply ERAS to lung surgery, to urology, gynecology, and then suddenly it's a lot of money. And if we look how were the cost saving on the right side, you see our uh, finance director of the hospital is very happy. He's very happy because the saving were over $30 million, also Swiss franc or euro, for uh, the application of ERAS which is not bad, uh, provided the ERAS protocol is done adequately. And then something more. We are all struggling with beds in our hospital around the world. And with the ERAS, we spared 16,000 beds, which is also a lot of bed and a good opportunity to develop uh, uh, more, to, to, to have more patients in the hospital. So the ERAS outcome. You have a decrease in complications and length of stay. You have decrease in costs. And you have an increase in patient satisfaction, although I did not show the data. 
you have a best, better hospital organization with more bed available, it's a higher turnover. But for that, you need to monitor your data, you need a database, and you need to audit your outcome. And the big question is, how can we measure the ERAS success? We have done a big uh, analysis, a joint statement between the ERAS International and ERAS USA uh, societies, and it's depend from the protocol used, the compliance to the protocol should be over 70%. What does it mean? It means you should really apply errors and not thinking you are doing errors, but measuring you are doing errors, and you should apply 70% of the, 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 the measure. Then you should, decrease, you should have a decrease in length of stay, but this should not be with a higher readmission rate how it was with, um, with fast-track surgery in the past. The readmission rate should stay low. And of course, you should have a decrease in complication. And all this element is a way to measure the success of errors. But for that, you need the data collection and audit. And for that, we just published a Swiss validation of the enhanced recovery after surgery, Swiss database. And actually, it's interesting because in the various hospital we made an audit, you have an errors coverage for the given specialty between 76 and 100%. And the data accuracy is 85%. It's not 100%, so there is room for improvement. But before you can say you are doing errors, you should demonstrate you do errors. If we look at the Eras Society worldwide in 2021, you have 95,000 patients in a lot of institutions in 32 countries around the world. We have them also in Spain. But ERAS is still at the beginning. ERAS today is still in the early adopters, and I would have to that growing to the early majority. And the big question is uh, why don't we have more international data available? Because 100,000 patients is a lot, but worldwide is not that much. Because to implement the real ERAS protocol, you have some challenges. Because one of the main obstacles to the implementation of ERAS, a lot of people think they do ERAS already because they have some idea about that. But show the protocol, show the compliance to the protocol. Are you really doing what you think you do? Show the complication rate, length of stay, readmission rate. And if you don't have that, you cannot claim you are doing ERAS. So the big question is, you want the real ERAS like this? or you was the ERAS-like or a fake ERAS? This is the big question because they are not equivalent. And of course, with the real ERAS, you will have better outcome. So this is a multimodal pathway. The pathophysiology is to reduce the surgical stress. You will have less morbidity, better recovery, and this should be evidence-based. And this is the real ERAS. And this needs a systematic implementation, and that's a piece of work. If you want to implement a real ERAS pathway, you need almost a year to have that in your hospital. That's the point between the, the start, the, 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 the planning of an ERAS pathway, and the success after the implementation. For that, you need to do that systematically with all the team members. You need to do seminar, you need the guidance, you need the data collection to monitor what you are doing and to make an audit of what you are doing. And of course, it's from help. If you have a helpline, if you have some problem, you can have the benefit of people who did ERAS before you. But the point is you need to monitor ERAS, you need to monitor the compliance and the outcome. Because improve adherence to the ERAS protocol is improve outcome. And I would like to show you that with our own data. You see, the more you have uh, uh, used, uh, apply the protocol, the less, uh, the shorter the hospital stay, the less the complication, and the less the major complication. Why is it so? Because the surgeon don't always see the reality. They claim they are good, they think they are good, but show me your data. And that's a picture that my anesthesiologist gave to me how uh, she see the surgeons. So the importance of audit is to show you that you are really doing what you are doing. When you are starting a program of ERAS, your compliance, the protocol will increase because you are working on that. The entire team is here. And consequently, you have a decrease in the length of stay. This is almost mathematical. This has been demonstrated everywhere, in Switzerland, in the UK, in Canada, in the United States, uh, everywhere. 
But the problem is when you have reached a lower length of stay, you say, yes, we got it. And you are no longer so cautious. And that's exactly what happened. The compliance to the protocol will decrease and the length of stay will increase again. And this can move award, uh, away but when you are working on that. I give you, this is a dashboard of the ERA's uh, uh, audit system. What you see here that the compliance to the protocol, you see over the year, the compliance is increasing and over the year, the length of stay is decreasing. This is data of over 2000 pancreas patients. Uh, it is mathematical. This is the, the, the demonstration of the scheme I just showed you before. So ERA's audit is a real-time quality control provided you put good data in your database. So the ERAS concept, they are some essential. To have a successful ERAS protocol, you will decrease the, the surgical stress. You will decrease the complication, decrease the hospital stay, and decrease the cost. When you measure that, you have a successful ERAS pathway. For that, you need a dedicated team. For that, you need to apply the ERAS protocol on a systematic way. For that, you will need to measure the compliance. Are you, you really doing what you think you do? And then with that, you have your audit, you have research. And when you have the outcome of your audit of your research, you can improve the compliance, you can improve the protocol because those protocols, they are systematic, but they are not written in stone. When we improve the knowledge, the body of knowledge, we can improve uh, the quality of the protocol. So ERAS is a multidisciplinary work, systematic implementation. You need to audit the compliance and the outcome, and you will decrease its complication, length of stay, and cost. This is very important. Try it, you'll love it, provided you monitor your data. And I would like to show you something. Now. Quand j'étais un jeune chirurgien, les durées d'hospitalisation étaient bien plus longues. Les patients avaient des drains, des tuyaux, des sondes et ils ne mangeaient et ne buvaient pas. Ça les rendait malades et moi aussi. Mais désormais, avec ERAS et la chirurgie minimale invasive, nous pouvons améliorer toute notre prise en charge. Alors même s'il est impossible de rajeunir nos chirurgiens, nous pouvons améliorer et moderniser toute la chirurgie. Avec ERAS Okay, that was it, guys. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Indeed, you see the world patrimony of UNESCO. This is uh, there. We are making some wine since almost thousand years, and it was a great pleasure and a great honor to be a part of this meeting. I hope you enjoyed the British uh, Journal Surgery uh, lecture, although it was virtual. And uh, I'm done with this presentation. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Professor De Martins. This has been uh, a wonderful, a wonderful presentation. And um, uh, we have enjoyed it very much. It, this is something that tells us that surgery is more than just surgical technique. It is culture, it's innovation. It's about improving outcomes, measure them, and then making changes in order to increase value for our patients. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, pasamos a continuación a la siguiente mesa de la sesión del BGS sobre centros de formación. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias.